Welcome back to the Originals in Atlanta. Our next time honored restaurant lies in downtown, an area of great historical significance. Seeds of the civil rights movement were planted here. Strolling the halls of Morehouse College was a student named Martin Luther King. And residing on a street named after Dr. King is what many consider the mecca of soul food. While soul food is southern cooking, not all southern cooking has soul. Here at the Busy Bee Cafe, they're going to help us straighten it out. Hi, hello. So glad Good to, to see, you. see you. Meet Tracy Gates, running the Busy Bee for the past quarter century. Tell me the difference between soul food and southern food. I think southern cooking is just items that people have come to know that you can only expect to get in the south right when you can cook southern cooking or you have the ability to cook as complex as this food is you want them to feel the love the time the effort and everything in every bite that's the beautiful thing about busy bee here soul food means passion a southern cuisine cooked purely from the heart so you gotta have heart yeah. to have soul food in order to put the love in Gotta have love. Do you have any love? Whatever your definition of soul food, love is the main ingredient in their side dishes. Another hallmark of soul food eateries. Look at all the side dishes. Black eyed peas, broccoli casserole, buttered okra, cabbage, candied yams, chitlins, coleslaw, collard greens, corn, mashed potato. God almighty. The Busy Bee Cafe was started by a Miss Lucy Jackson in 1947. It was the time of segregation in the South. By law, African Americans were only allowed to own businesses on two streets in Atlanta. But Miss Jackson thrived with her menu of homestyle soul food. After Lucy died, Tracy's father bought the place and soon turned it over to Tracy. Now we're talking. <laughs> who understands that being an original means staying true to the original recipes. Some ham hocks here, baby. And not changing a thing about their famous bee-licious fried chicken. It's crispy, it's light at the same time, and juicy and completely flavorful. It's amazing. Where did bee-licious come from? It's a word that describes our version of fried chicken. It's moist, juicy. It's marinades and spices that we've created over the years, and we've added something every year, or we, we've learned of a new spice, or a new taste of stuff. Not delicious, but bee-licious. I love it. Let's go into the hive of the busy bee, the kitchen. I can't wait here. This is what I've been waiting for. And see how Annie creates this delicious fried chicken. Let me tell you something. Fry right or don't fry at all. That's what I say, OK? Am I right, Chef? You're right. So now she's marinated this overnight, these chicken pieces right here. You see that? Then she's dredged it in this flour that has black pepper and salt. Probably has a little garlic powder in there, too. Yes, a little. You see, the nose knows. So you're going to fry it as a total of about 10 minutes. Yeah. Exactly. 350 degrees, yeah. and it, we're talking perfect fried chicken. Yeah. Then it's into a pressurized deep fryer to cook their golden birds. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. You guys have no, no idea. This is so flavorful, even our vegetarian camera guy almost caved in to its seductive spices. Striker, you would probably even eat this. Another staple of soul food is cornbread, which complements almost any meal. Here they do it the right way, savory, but not sweet. That's old-fashioned buttermilk right there, baby. So now the flour goes in there. The whole building's shaking. So now we're adding a little bit of sugar. Yeah. All by hand, all from scratch. In the oven it goes. We can turn them right over. Look at this. You see that? Your mouth watering? I can tell you why Dr. Martin Luther King used to hang out here. I can see why. The late civil rights leader is the most well-known figure to feast at the Busy Bee. The walls are lined with dozens of other public figures who make it a must-stop in Atlanta. Customers appreciate this storied past. It has so much history because, of course, when you come in, if you're not familiar, you have all the pictures of the famous people who ate here before you did. So it's kind of like putting a stamp of approval. You know, when you think of soul food, you think of, you know, soul. Mm. You know, 
As I say around here, this is delicious. That can be framed and just put on the wall. That is beautiful. And how is it being transformed by amazing global influences? It's perfectly golden. We're on a quest to uncover the incredible diversity behind this all-American staple, and along the way, eat some of the very best fried chicken around. is a way to make great fried chicken for a Sunday dinner, but it's a lot of work. So what if you want to make a lot of fried chicken at once? American ingenuity to the rescue. There's almost always a line out in front of Atlanta's historic Busy Bee Cafe, a favorite of Dr. Martin Luther King. And at the center of any plate put together by owner Tracy Gates is her famous fried chicken. Wow, Tracy, so this is where it all happens. This is where it all happens. Oh, wow, so this is like a lot of chicken. Is this like enough for the day or? Oh, no, no, we have buckets and buckets, buckets of chicken. And buckets and so buckets this is just buckets like of chicken. round one of the line. And how about in the, in the flour? Was that just regular all-purpose flour? Um, it's a regular all-purpose flour. It has salt, pepper, and secrets. Secrets, that's <laughs> a big part of the recipe. To serve 2,000 pounds of fried chicken a week as they do at Busy Bee, you can't cook it one order at a time in a grease skillet. And now... No skillets? No skillets. Yeah. Um, we use these pressure fryers. We seal this, lock it in, and it cooks under pressure. We cook our chicken between eight and nine minutes. It makes it more so juicy. It, it'll be a full breast when it comes out and flavorful, and it will not be greasy. Who needs buttermilk when you got the pressure cooker sending steam right to the bone to keep it juicy? Yes. And still crispy. Invented in the 1930s, pressure fryers revolutionized fried chicken and made possible the big fried chicken chains. One main advantage, they cook the chicken fast. All right, okay. so it's almost done. There it is. That's it. Uh, we let the steam off. Moisture out, crisp in. Mm -hmm. Quiet. The truth, I feel like we're gonna open the Quiet. cauldron of pleasure. <laughs> there it is. Busy Bees. Famous crisp, moist chicken. Wow, it is so golden and crispy. And it's not too dark. It's like really light, beautiful golden. Only one thing left to do. Eat. Eat. Wow. I mean, it's perfect. And every single nook is crispy, all the little bits. Mm -hmm. You're crispy. I love you. <laughs> that is crunch with attitude. It is like, come on. Come on. I got more crunch than you know what to do with. Okay. And there's the rest of that steam from the pressure cooker coming out. The food is unbelievable, but the soul of this place is amazing. You know, everybody around is happy. The place is packed. There's been a line out the door since we got here. I feel like I'm making a discovery, but I think I'm the only one that didn't know. There may be nothing quite like southern fried chicken, but that doesn't mean the South has a monopoly on it. Coming up on this edition of Southern Accents, Find out where you can experience the sights, sounds, tastes, and thrills of the past today. First, we'll take you barnstorming in an authentic World War II era airplane. <laughs> wow. Then experience an Atlanta restaurant that has been serving up the best in Southern cooking since 1947. Next, we visit a man who restores lost recordings and see why what he does with them has the music industry buzzing. And finally, we travel to Trenton, Georgia to spend a delightful evening at the world's largest drive-in theater. Stay tuned! Southern Accents is next. Funding for Southern Accents is provided by the Chattanooga Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Chattanooga, a great city by nature. a bit too adventurous for you, and I understand completely. We have another less topsy-turvy way for you to step back in time. It is hard to beat the memories of meals at Grandma's house, but you can come close the next time you're in downtown Atlanta. The Busy Bee Cafe has some of the best fried chicken you will ever taste, and that's just the beginning. 
nothing's going to set your day straight better than a meal like this. And after more than 60 years serving Atlanta, the Busy Bee Cafe is legendary, which is just what the owner had in mind when she took over in the 1980s. Some years ago when I first started working here and had to learn everything, I just had this thought in my mind. I wanted people to, when they came to Atlanta, that this was a place you had to visit. Folks from all walks of life sit side by side, savoring the Busy Bee Fair. And it matters not whether you call this Southern cooking or soul food. I think African Americans just say soul food. Caucasian Americans may say Southern cooking or country cooking. I, I think it just pretty much depends on what group chooses to use which words to describe a traditional Southern, traditional Southern cooking. Be it traditional Southern cooking or soul food, it's easy to pick out the customer favorites. Most popular item, hands down, is fried chicken. Fried chicken, chicken any form. <laughs> fried chicken, baked chicken, smothered chicken, but hands down, fried chicken. But there's a lot more to enjoy here than just the chicken. Waitresses know customers by name. It's kind of a family place. If southern cooking, the traditional southern cooking is what you're interested in, or the vegetables are garden fresh, we make trips to the farmer's market every morning to pick collars. We make trips to get the food that, when people think of the South, they come to eat. And that Southern food has brought the Busy Bee a following of celebrities and walls of awards. My favorite story here, it was uh, shortly after I first started coming, uh, a table sat down beside me and they had, it was their first time here. And they asked the waiter, what's good? And he just simply turned around and pointed at all the awards on the wall. He said, they don't give those away for free. Everything here is good. No question about that. The fried chicken, the ham hops, all of it's good, so we try it all. But don't get too carried away. You'll want to save room for dessert. Made from scratch desserts, all cakes, all pies. Uh, top seller, the cakes. Next top seller, peach cobbler. Um, banana pudding is great, um, but the top sellers are the homemade cakes. But hands down, top desserts, according to numbers, Cake, peach cobbler. Peach cobbler is from scratch. Real great, good grade of peaches for it. Not canned peaches or anything like that. And we get peaches from California, even in winter. The Busy Bee does a lot of catering, has a booming takeout business, and can even take the stress out of planning your holiday meal. We prepare an entire meal, including the turkey, the dressing, the vegetables, the bread, the dessert, the tea, the ham. All you have to do is warm it up and eat it. When you arrive at the Busy Bee and you see a line, don't be discouraged. Particularly on weekdays, it moves pretty fast. The waits are on Sundays are extremely long. Uh, people usually line up about an hour before we open so they can be the first ones to get in. Uh, usually come at opening time, right at 11. Uh, from between 11 and 12, you can get in with very little waiting, but our lunch runs the entire day, so It'll slow down just gradually and then it'll pick back up. We're open on Sundays from 12 noon until 7 p.m., Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m., and we're closed on Saturdays. The whole restaurant is moving directly across the street in a new development because we've pretty much outgrown this place. We'll probably be open seven days a week then. The location may change as it has before. But the Busy Bee Cafe will still offer customers a taste of the South, as intended since 1947. If you really want traditional Southern cooking, Southern cooking, soul food, country kitchen cooking, whatever you call it, and you want the authentic thing with no frills, no foo foo, you really want to think that you're at grandmother's house or you're out in the country and Southern, this is.